During this session, I'm going to be talking about the different types of solar power available to each and every one of us, and also considering the main positives and negatives for this non-renewable option. So to start off with, my first example is basic solar heating. Solar heating is, I guess, the, the simplest of the options. It's basically copper running, copper piping running through a black surface, and light energy is absorbed and transferred to heating the water. So that's one method which is available to you. A step up from that, I guess, is solar furnaces. So what we have here is a system of mirrors which focuses solar energy on one point to achieve much, much higher energies. Um, the example on the top left is from Odilio in France. It's used for ex scientific experiments and can reach 3000 degrees Celsius. The other example in the desert in California is Solar One, and this is a system which actually does heat up water to create steam and then drive a, a generator to make electricity from there. So these are solar furnaces. Photovoltaic solar cells, I guess, is the type of thing that you imagine when you think about solar energy. Now, how these solar cells work is that they transfer visible light directly into electricity. Fortunately, they produce a very small amount of uh, voltage, and the current is generally only big enough to run some small electrical devices. Okay, so there's not a lot of energy there, but it's getting better all the time. Um, the finer details here is the fact that um, these devices use what's known as a semiconductor. Now, semiconductors are insulators in their pure form, um, but they are able to conduct electricity when heated or combined with other materials. So what happens is a, a semiconductor gets mixed or doped with phosphorus, and then it develops an excess of free electrons. So therefore, the electrons can move around. This becomes known as an n-type semiconductor. Now, um, then we'll have another type of semiconductor, um, doped with other materials, maybe boron, and this develops, I guess, an excess of holes or spaces that accept electrons. This becomes known as a p-type semiconductor. And with this kind of complementary system, it means that the energy from the sunlight quite easily uh, knocks out uh, electrons and allows them flow to the next hole, and this flow process allows current to, um, current to exist and therefore the production of, or the transfer of light energy into electrical energy. Another type of option is known as the thermoelectric converter. Now what happens with a thermoelectric converter? Again, it here it uses a temperature difference between a hot and a cold plate to produce current. It does still use um, semiconductors but this time it's the temperature difference, and that temperature difference is produced by um, sunlight falling on one side and not on the other. And the good thing is about this is it absorbs all of the M spectrum. So there's no or uh, less wasted options there. So this gives it better efficiency than the photovoltaic cells which we've just been looking at. So advantages and disadvantages. Uh, advantages are renewable, uh, there's no acid rain produced from the byproducts, no global warming associated because there's no production of carbon dioxide. Um, it's cheap to run once it's built. Disadvantages are um, unreliable. Why? Well, we have clouds. So there's an unreliability element there, and we have seasons, and we have change in atmospheric conditions, and we have night and day, crucially. Um, few areas are suitable. Finding places in the world which have enough sunlight are actually quite limited. Uh, low power energy efficiency ratings. Uh, toxic chemicals in solar cells can damage habitats. So, as I said, the phosphorus and the boron and things like that are chemicals you don't want to do, be distributed into the habitats. And they're pretty expensive to build in the first place. Although, as the drive and the motivation to find a replacement for fossil fuel continues, it means that the science behind it 
is developing cheaper and cheaper versions every day. So this is becoming more and more cost efficient as you see it more and more around the world.